Welcome to my channel folks. In today's video I am going to show you how you can create your first serverless project. In the previous one we saw that we installed the npm packages and then the serverless framework packages and today we will go ahead and use those packages to in create our first function from our boilerplates. So uh, I am going to call my API as amazing API. You can go ahead and choose whichever name you are familiar with and then we are going to use the AWS Python template because we are going to use AWS Cloud to host our API and after doing that we are going to customize this project to our needs and the customization is going to happen in these two files that is serverless.yaml file and then handler.py so let us go to our terminal and do that so first I'm going to create a directory which is called as amazing API and let us move to that directory and now I'm going to use a serverless function that is serverless binary to create and then I'm going to use the template AWS Python and when I do that it is going to take the boilerplate with the default configurations and set up my function and it is also giving me a hint saying successfully generated boilerplate a project and that is called uh, from the template as AWS Python and I need to change the service property in this file so let us go and open my code in the editor and let us go ahead and customize these two files here I am in my Visual Studio editor let us go ahead and open our amazing API directory and then I'm going to select this folder and here if you see that serverless has created three different files for us one is the git ignore file which is going to tell the version control system that is git that we are using to ignore certain files for example configuration files or variables and other things and for example here in this case it has ignored all these files and also the dot serverless yaml file and the next file that it has created is a handler.py this is the lambda function that is going to be hosted on aws and it has also created a simple function for us which we can use ready-made and finally the third file is serverless.yaml and this is the configuration file which is going to tell AWS what is my service name what is my function name in which region to host and what buckets that are hosted so let us go ahead and see what are the things that we need to pay attention to and we can customize the first thing that we need to do is customize our function name and it says that it's currently configured as AWS Python and it says update this with your own service name and I'm going to call this as amazing API next thing is if you are going to run your functions in AWS cloud then leave it as AWS or if not if you want to host it in Azure then you we should have used on a different template and then created a, a serverless YAML file for Azure and the next thing important thing I would like to give attention to is the stage and the region that is every function is is at the development stage when you are writing it and if you are comfortable to deploying it to production then we can go ahead and change it but when you are developing leave it as a stage so let us uncomment it and put our function in development stage and which region you want to deploy your function if you are happy with US East 1 leave it as it is but I would like to host my function in AP South so I'm going to go ahead and edit it saying AP South 1 so that is done and if you want to have any other resources that you want to customize for your function you can go ahead and configure them like for example an IAM role that might be required or if you want to include any other packages or let us if you scroll down there is other places where you can configure your resources say if you want to upload some objects and store them in S3 then you can use uh, uh, the AWS S3 bucket say that create a new resource and this is an AWS bucket and then this is the bucket name if you remember we just skipped a section called functions this is uh, a lambda function this is referring to the function that we have in handler so if you see here it refers to a function called hello and if I go to my handler.py we have also have a function here so we have got a very simple function here and then it has a body which is a simple text file and it takes a parameter as event and context event is the trigger that is going to run your lambda function if you remember lambda functions are triggered by events 
and those events are passed on to your lambda function so that your function can process the parameters from that it might be an upload of an s3 object or change in an ec2 state and context where it is running and what are all the other relevant parameters required to run your lambda function is passed on to this function and finally we have a response field and we are setting a response code as 200 because it is customizable we need to pass on a parameter of a status code of http 200 say if you want to handle the errors in your function gracefully and you want to tell the application on the front end saying that there is an error has happened but instead of showing it a 404 page you can gracefully say that this is 200 but still this is the error message that has happened in the back end so you can customize the error codes as you want it and in this case let us leave it as http 200 and finally there is a body and we need to give it as a string and then the uh, that is why we are using the json.dumps parameter to convert the body file body parameter into a string and we are returning the response so that is how you create a function and then if you want to modify it let us go ahead and modify this text so we will use that later when you are invoking the lambda function so i'm just going to say this welcome to serverless demo by mystique so you can go ahead and modify it anytime go ahead and save it that's it for in this video in this next video we will show you how to invoke your lambda functions how to deploy it and then how to invoke it thanks for watching happy learning